Hola, soy Dominica, and this is our sous chef Pampila. And we're from Cosecha Cafe. I'm the chef and owner. We're also promoting today is Cherry Bomb Cookbook. We love, love, love. And they have one of our recipes that we serve as a pork carne adobada. And in that, there is a lovely uh, chile salsa, red guajillo, that you can use for enchiladas. And so, we, and of course, for making lovely tacos. Um, the recipe calls for cooking the meat with um, beer, but you don't have to. You can skip that part and just add a little bit of broth or water is fine. Miss um, Panfila is uh, part of the Cosecha team for seven years and she's been amazing teaching the new generation of senoras how to make tortillas and she's also a tortilla master from Michoacan. Um, but her and her family have been here and created um, the amazing Chicano culture here. Her children are part of the East Bay University and the next generation of teachers and educators and librarians. Yay! <laughs> so, Pamela, <laughs> she's going to show us how to make homemade tortillas. And one of the companies that we love is La Finca. This is a place that you'll see they'll have um, masa for tortillas and masa for tamales. If you go to your Mexican grocery stores here in the East Bay, you'll find some La Finca. They usually sell it in one pound. But you can also use um, the dry harina maseca. And at Cosecha, we grind up our own corn, but we also rely on La Finca sometimes, and we've been working with them for years. So here's some masa, and she, even though we buy it, she still fixes it. So, Pamfila, take it away. Okay, y vamos a hacer aquí las tortillas con la masa. Es, tiene que estar um, suavecita. No nice tiene, and soft. No, no tiene que ser dura porque se hacen feas. Y ya tenemos el, um, es caliente. Vamos a limpiar um, el cobal con un poco de aceite. So, we have Puedes. the nice griddle, nice and warm. And we're going to put a little bit of olive oil on the griddle. We're going to look at the masa and make sure it's not too dry. She wants to add a little water to it, massage that in with a little a bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Pone masajito para que esté uh, suave. Si le falta agua, le pone agua. Y... Mm -hmm. So you're kneading the dough just for a little bit. Even though it's already prepared and ready to go, she always likes to add a little extra water, a little extra salt, and give it a little uh, massage. <laughs> and, and you can just uh, sprinkle on a little bit of water, just a little bit. And then that looks beautiful and smooth. Y aquí tenemos la um, tortillera. And you y can go to the a... Berkeley Library. Ellos regalan para unas dos días or tres días. So the Berkeley Lending Library has some cooking equipment and I think the tortilla press is now part of that. Oh, see? Oh. See? So this is really lovely. So this is a good quality one. So this is lovely. You're very blessed. Okay. Tenemos una así como tortillas que sean como cortar. Lo puede cortar así. Pone la bolsa y lo, lo pasa las tijeras. Perfect. Para que salga más, um, so this is an example. Este. You don't want to throw anything away. You want to reuse, recycle, and start doing that at home. So you use everything that you, if you're buying and using plastic bags, you're going to use them. And so this, she just cuts in the, in the size of the tortilla press. And this is just a grocery bag. And then we're just, it doesn't have to be a fancy Ziploc bag. You don't have to go and buy another item. Just use what you already have at home. Even to even wax paper will be fine. Yeah. Y depende como quiera las tortillas si las quiere um, chiquitas o grandes. Entonces hace el la, la bolita de masa chiquita o grande pone aquí pone acá y presiona. También no muy delgadas porque si no no la va a poder sacar de entre estos dos papeles, no, los, no la va a poder sacar si la hace muy delgada. Yeah, not too thin, because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to take them off of the paper. So just, mm -hmm. just enough, and she's giving this one press. And we're gonna, she's going to keep on going. And then I see, a veces, I see people doing two presses, dos mm -hmm. veces. Dos veces. Pero normalmente no dos veces. 
con una solo, depende, si quiere um, bien delgada, entonces le pucha más, uh -huh. si quiere un poquito más gruesa, menos. Como va practicando, entonces puede... And then when you're, see, so a little bit at a time, one press should be fine, taking off the first plastic. Now she's going to grab her hand straight to the tortilla with very gently. Eh, puede ser, uh, pone aquí, arriba, no acá, sino pone aquí. That, para yeah, cuando I, se saque su tortilla, la ponga así y solo va así. Para que también no se queme. Bueno, hace errores, pero bueno. Entonces, She's going to do that one again. But see how it, the masa also wants to stick to your finger, but it's okay. You can yeah. patch it back up. <laughs> y, es, y es como la, como más o menos pancakes. Cuando ya se mira como que se puede voltear, también puede, puede usar una espátula para que no se queme. Oh, yes. Puede ser como el pancake, la pone y la lo voltea ahí. Yeah, so okay. it's okay if you don't want to use your fingertips, you can have your trusty spatula and think of it as a pancake. So give it a few minutes on one side and then we can use the trusty spatula also to flip this. And then we'll show you um, how to do the fresh corn tortillas um, without the tortilla press, just with the plastic bags, just so you can see. Okay. It smells really good in here. Okay. We're going to turn this griddle up a little higher. It's at 300 right now. We're going to go all the way to like 375 on this little griddle. And a cast iron pan is perfect. Just a nice big cast iron pan. Griddle that up and um, you'll be fine for making tortillas. And this one's looking really beautiful. It's starting to puff up on one side. It's looking, the color is gorgeous. And the corn has such a nice, um, beautiful smell. It's very floral when you think about it. It's very floral. And, um, sí, cuando, cuando tenga así como uh, bombitas y como se mire como me doradita por los dos lados, entonces ya está lista para, para comer. Yeah, and you're ready to eat. You're looking at something that has a little bit of, you see there's a little bit of air pockets in there, steaming in there, and you can see it's starting to get a little crispy on one side, and then she said, yeah, you're almost ready to start eating. Yes, so. And then I'm going to just keep going with this. I'm going to keep going to 400. Let's go for it. It's <laughs> para rápido, salen muchas tortillas. Yeah. Okay. I think we found a hot spot on this side. <laughs> every stove, every oven has their quirks. Uh -huh. And this one, this is a good hot, hot Diferente. spot. Diferente. Como este comal, pero si está en la estufa, es como término medio. Y se cuecen más rápido. Yes. So, we're going to keep going with this. We're also going to look at um, aplastando. Pero sin máquina, what are you going to do? No tiene la máquina. But you can si no still te, use uh -huh, the plastic. Así. So I can take this away. Let's pretend it's not here. Eso, look at how beautiful. Get a nice close-up shot. Eh, lo más delgada que, que pueda. Se, se tarda un poquito más en coserse porque es un poquito más, más gruesa. Pero si no tiene esto, puede hacer así. Lo más poquito delgada que pueda. Y aplastando con plástico también. Poquito con las deditos. Mm -hmm. So they're going to cook. Um, Se deja cocer un poquito más. Yeah, it, you have to let it cook a little uh, longer, but it's, it's a thicker tortilla, but you don't have to have the tortilla press. So don't be discouraged. If the Lending Library sends you away <laughs> for that day. And then we can also, the important thing when you're starting to make tortillas is um, at this point, it's a perfect time if you're making little quesadillas, you can add the cheese and start stacking as you go, or just start or just start making tortillas, and then you can go back and keep them warm with a dish towel, and that's perfect. And then you can take this to the table and it's ready to roll and enjoy with your dinner, or you can go back and start making quesadillas later on. Um, but this is like beautiful, so aromatic, 
This is a wonderful thing that we have in our community here in the Bay Area. We have La Finca that's every day sending out fresh masa and um, it's been nixtan malais. And it has, look at how pretty that is. Look at it. I can, you can get married again. Otra vez. We're going to get married again. This is, <laughs> ready. Yes. She says she's ready for marriage. Mira, that's proof. She's ready to get married. Look at that. It's a perfect tortilla. It's, it's nice and puffy. So remember, pampila. de cosecha. <laughs> So that's something they say in Mexico. If the rice comes out really good or if the tortillas are nice and fluffy like this, mm -hmm. that means you're ready to get married. Mm -hmm. Lista! Si no, yes. si no se hace, no, no se puede casar. No. Yeah. We all, we all said one of our jokes at Cosecha, if the rice doesn't come out good, we're like, no, sorry, you're not ready for marriage yet. One more year. One more year of practice. So these are looking gorgeous. Oh la la. Look at that. Beautiful! Look at this. I'm so happy. So, in my family. Mainly, la puede ser aquí, pero yo. Sí. Así. Así. Sí, con la deditos. So, you can use the same plastic, okay, at home. And you can just um, press with your fingertips. And then also, one of my friends does that. Oh my God, her tortillas are lovely. Uh, she's from Guatemala, Miss Isenia. She's also a tortilla master. And she has her technique also of using um, just the table and her fingertips. And they come in a little thicker, but um, a little fluffier too. So something to think about. You don't need to have all the extra tools. You know, just go simple. Or banana leaves, or just your hands. Mm -hmm. And these are nice little gorditas. So when these are done, um, you can pinch them to make a sope, or you can cut Ooh. them in the middle, <laughs> and the sope is like a cup, and or you can cut them in the middle and you can stuff them. So that's also a real treat. So we're doing a couple of different things here. For me, um, in my family, we would have corn tortillas instead of like the Wonder Bread on the table. It'd be a stack of corn tortillas and butter, so that we would just be eating a lot of butter and bread <laughs> and it was still kind of like keeping in in line with that that 50s photograph of the dinner table with the pound of butter and the wonder bread but for us it was this stack of tortillas and sometimes they were store-bought sometimes they were homemade it depends on the schedule right so um today my favorite taco i mean this is going back a long time now my favorite taco is just a fresh tortilla with salt and avocado. So that's like heaven, heaven, heaven. So we'll do, and also, if you don't eat butter and you wanna keep it vegan, I like adding a little chili and olive oil with garlic, and I make my own chili paste. And so that becomes my little kind of, um, you know, spicy butter, but with no butter. <laughs> so we always try to, I'm not a vegan, but I, I strive, one day I'll be a vegan, one day. So, um, thank you for inviting us. Thank you, Pamphila. Welcome. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, thank you Dad. Hi. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> and thank you, Berkeley Public Library. Keep keep up the good work. And then shop at your farmer's market. Shop at your Mexican grocery store. We love all the Mi Tierras uh, and Mi Ranchos Mi Rancho. and all the good. supermarkets around here that keep us cooking in the, in the California uh, Mexican-American tradition that's been here. Eh, over 250 years. Puede comprar en, la, en las tiendas como venden como de a 5 libras. Es como más o menos así. Es, sí. Y puede guardar en a, el refrigerador por dos semanas, una semana. So if you invest in a bag, they're usually in about maybe a one pound, two pound portion. So it's not a big old industrial bag. It'll be a smaller portion. You could also keep this in the refrigerator for about maybe a week, week and a half, and you'll be fine. So you can be tearing off a little bit. Or you can go ahead and make have an assembly line and have everybody in the family practice and in your household. And in that way, you can have them already ready to reheat and para, para hacer un sope. Un sope así. Sí. So, oh, in that sense. way, <laughs> I'm going to show you, we're going to do a little sope for you. Así. Pero es, es caliente. Es caliente para hacer sope casi. 
matcha. So this could be like a little vegan sope. We don't have to put cheese. Okay, we don't, and so this sope, you just, you're just pinching it and you're making, you let it cook a little bit longer. And then um, if you have any frijolitos, yeah, uh, chilito, little quesito, avocado, <laughs> avocado. Eso. So just letting this cook up, look how pretty that is. So you can make a little stack of little cups and you can add, you can top this with whatever you have in the house. If you have crab salad, avocado, lettuce, then you have yourself a, a little, a little sope de cangrejo. So you can also do a little vegan sope with frijoles. Thank you, Tanya. And then just doing a little vegan sope is like one of my favorites. So this with the little beans, it could be regular whole beans or refried beans. And then you're adding just a little bit of avocado. You don't have to add a bunch of um, cheese or lettuce, but that's nice. The lettuce does give it some nice texture and crunch. But for me, it's like that is very comforting. The, the corn masa is my, one of my favorites. This is very spicy, by the way. So be careful. And that's Ooh, like our little, yeah. This is a spicy. <laughs> no, see, it's, it's spicy, but it's so good. I see. But that's our little uh, sope. Beautiful. And there's a little two pinches in the center. And then one more close up of just my favorite taco. It's just gonna be, do, you have, do we have a spoon, Tanya? Mm -hmm. Gracias. No, de puro aguacate. <laughs> a ver, los frijoles. Andale, si, sí. no le gusto. No le gusta. Mm -hmm. She likes it. Uh, can I get married? Is it, is it ready? Am I sí. ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, this is my go-to taco. Just a little bit of salt and a little bit of, of avocado. That for me is like the perfect taco. It's like 100% California right there. <laughs> we have some Santa Barbara avocados that are just now in season. And um, I'm in love with them. This is it. I don't, I don't even add chili. I just go straight. I just go straight for it. Gracias. Mm -mm -mm. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs>